Today is a universal children's day and just so you know this day came about far back in 1954 so 20th of every November is set aside for the commemoration of universal children's day. The day is aimed at promoting togetherness around the world, awareness of the problems children face in every corner of the globe and improving their welfare as well protect as well as protect their rights. Children normally are said to be gift from God and therefore it is the responsibility of caregivers to take adequate care of their children and protect their rights without compromise. With the child rights Acts yet to be domesticated in many states here in Nigeria. Children's advocates believe these young ones are still living in an unfavorable environment now. However, we all know what it means to invest in children. In case you doubt it, it translates to investing in the future. Today is also aimed at focusing on promoting and spreading awareness on the rights of children considering the environment. This is why it is important to ensure children get adequate basic needs which include health care and education among others. This evening on Nigeria Today, we will be looking at those issues around children and how to improve their living. I am Muspa and we have welcome to Nigeria Today on NTA News 24. All right, so joining me in the studio to discuss this topic is um, this topic uh, actually a better future for her children is uh, Dr. Judith uh, Giwa Amu, Education Officer at uh, UNICEF. You're welcome, Dr. Judith. Thank you very much. And also on the program is uh, Temisola Ajare, Chairperson, Child Rights Committee, Voice of the Girls' Parliament. Welcome to Nigeria today. Temisola. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start with um, Dr. Judith and uh, what so many people are used to his uh, Children's Day. Now we're hearing Universal Children's Day, though it's not new anyway. But um, many people are not uh, aware of this day. What is the correlation and how did it come about? Well, the um, International, the Universal Day of the Child um, is a day that has been set aside to look at you know, um, key aspects of life, key sectors that have the ability to affect the development of every child. So you're not just looking at education, you're looking at health, you're looking at nutrition, water, sanitation and hygiene, protection. These are all key areas that go together to make for the holistic child, for what is desirable for a child who is able to assess his right or her rights to these services in an equitable uh, manner. Uh, the, uh, the Children's Day also focuses on children and there's, there seems to be more emphasis on education, but it focuses on children and how well children can, you know, cope with, the, with um, life in, um, on earth, cope and cope very well and also come to their, you know, meaningful developmental trajectories as expected of every child. Great, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Judith. I'm still staying with you. Now, uh, we've been celebrating this day since 1954. That's uh, some decades back. Now, what would you say has uh, changed since uh, this commemoration has started? Well, um, I think gradually, as we have moved from the Millennium Developmental Goals to Sustainable Developmental Goals, we see that there's more emphasis on inclusivity. So it's not just the, the regular children on the streets that are able. We look at children that are vulnerable, children that are double disadvantaged, maybe due to residents in a hard to reach area who are not able to access basic quality services. We are looking at children that not just basic education, when we talk of promoting equitable quality education, we are talking of education including the formal, the non-formal, the technical, vocational, and just the alternative um, educational models. 
some of these models have, you know, um, been um, identified during this COVID-19 pandemic where um, we had to explore innovative ways to ensure that education continues so that the gap of children being at home during this period is, not, um, is filled as much as possible and to ensure that the children not only take education, that they actually learn and are able to come to, you know, meaningful knowledge. Thank you very much. Now, Temisola, I'm bringing you in now. As a child, I want to say, and a chairperson of um, uh, the parliament, uh, that's a uh, child rights committee voice of the girls' uh, parliament, uh, you speak for the people, your, your, your peers. Yes. Now, tell me, what would you say is really affecting you when you look at this environment, this society in Nigeria at large? What would, what would you say is affecting uh, the children? In today's society in Nigeria, um, a lot of things, a lot of problems that children face and sometimes we tend to make these problems seem less important than they actually are. We tend to say that because they're children, they don't always know what they're saying or they don't know as much about the world as people who have grown up. So first of all, education. In the education sector, there is a lot of room for improvements. Many children don't, in many schools, especially public schools, the proper facilities are not always in place for effective learning. For example, during this lockdown period, okay. there, was, there were online classes right. for those who could afford this most times. Okay. And you know, it's not every child that has access to the facilities needed for these online classes, such as the laptop. I am privileged to have a laptop and be able to attend these online classes. But many children in Nigeria don't have this privilege. And see, when school resume, resume officially, they are behind. And nobody's going to help them catch up. And since children are the future, and a very important part of their education is going to be missing, and you don't know what's going to happen to a child, how it's going to affect a child. Okay, that's right. Now, you've talked about education, and um, I remember some days back on this same program, we talked about um, um, the results of um, common entrance uh, that's uh, into Unity uh, schools across the country, and um, we had 60, more than 64% of uh, the candidates who sat for that exam uh, who did not uh, make uh, the cut of marks. Now, apart from education that you have just established, what are other areas that you think um, are really calling for attention again? Um, the issue of child safety okay. in their homes. All right. Many children are molested physically, emotionally, mentally. They are abused and they don't always have someone to report these issues to, to talk to about these things. And a lot of children feel unsafe in their own homes. A lot of children grow up on the streets. A lot of things happen to children when they, grow, or when they don't grow up with proper, a proper home and a loving environment to grow. Because these children are what grow to be our future. If we have children who are emotionally and mentally damaged, then we're going to have future leaders who are emotionally and mentally damaged as well. Okay, that's a serious issue you have just raised there, Temisola, and we're still grappling with it. We're hoping that the government will continue to do something about it, and other civil society organizations and even NGOs too, they are playing their roles in sensitizing people on this very important issue. And now, looking at that, that same molestation, like you put it, how does it affect you personally? Does it bring any concern to you? Yes. Personally, as a young girl All right. growing up in Nigeria, this unsafe environment that is now very publicized because of the social media, it makes, I can't just, as a girl, I can't just walk around the streets, even as a boy, my younger brother too, we can't just walk on the streets and feel safe, you know, because you never know who is a predator, who is going to attack you, who is out, who is out, who is looking out for you and who is not your friend, who is not on your side. You never know. I see it just creates a very unsafe environment. And when your mind is plagued with these issues, you can't focus on the really important things, on innovations, you know, thinking of problems to other pro thinking of solutions to other problems in the society because we are grappling with our own problems. 
All right, Dr. Judith, let, let me quickly bring you, uh, you in here. Uh, you've been listening to Temisola, and uh, she raised a very important issue there, uh, talking about uh, child molestation. How, what do you see about this? Yeah, um, well, um, from our own perspective, um, yeah. we identify, we see, we see education and schools as protective okay. because um, the more the children stay at home, the more they're exposed to some of these perpetrators of violence. We know there's, you know, um, physical violence, there's gender violence, and, uh, you know, there are, you know, other forms of violence that are prevalent at home. So um, the encouragement is for them to be able to come to school. And school also offers several services, such as mental health, psychosocial support, and that is one of the aspects that has been captured by the template that was developed towards school reopening. Right. It was um, headed by Federal Ministry of Education in collaboration with NCDC and um, Education in Emergencies Working Group Nigeria. And this template actually seeks to address because it is conversant of the fact that this period children have been at home. A lot has happened. Right. Some teachers say these are not the children that we sent home. They have come back, they have experienced sexual gender-based violence, and they, need, they, have, you know, they are experiencing a lot of trauma, which needs to be addressed as much as possible. And the school environment, again, you know, offers you know, the opportunity to address, address that through the training of teachers, to be able to you know, um, recognize the signs of abuse, and also raise, you know, make a referral you know, raise attention, draw attention to the relevant authorities going through the school system. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Judith. But, uh, like you said, it we didn't um, anticipate COVID-19, and yet it happened, and um, that's had a lot of impact on uh, child uh, rights, and uh, like education that we have been pointing out. What other areas do you think this uh, pandemic uh, has touched when it comes to children's rights okay apart from education you know um also at school children receive some basic health services such as immunization they also are able to receive school feeding you know the school feeding which is the um, availability of one adequate meal to a child for some children that is the main meal they have in a day so some of them have, you know, had to resort to other coping mechanisms. Right. Like you hear people talking about, you know, sex for food. That should not be. So children have suffered, you know, in access to nutrition, in access to food. They have also suffered um, in access to water, sanitation and hygiene, depending on, you know, what operates in the environment. Usually schools as guided by the um, National Policy on Education uh, have basic, or are supposed to have basic water facilities, you know, pipe on water, boreholes and all that. So at school, children are able to assess this, but sometimes when they're at home, they are not able to assess this. Um, another one, like she's already talked about, is protection. Right. And um, protection is from different angles. But coming back to education, um, I want to say that, you know, education is looked upon as an equity tool. It's a tool that levels, you know, is a tool that makes a child be able to sit with presidents. Right. It is a tool that makes sure that inequities that exist are addressed. Now, in a situation whereby during the COVID lockdown, about 3 million children are in hard to reach terrain. So these children were not reached like my um, young speaker said, they were not rich, and they also sat the WIAC exam. So maybe I look at these children as being doubly disadvantaged. And it is, the onus is, on for, is for the um, education system to be able to help them catch up so that they are at pair with their counterparts in other uh, parts of Nigeria. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Judy. So, we are still talking about uh, how to better the future of the children, Nigerian children, as uh, we speak. Now we're taking a break. We have more to discuss about after this time out.
thanks a lot for staying with us on Nigeria Today. The platform is NTN News 24 and we're focusing on a, a topic, very important one, that uh, towards a better future of children. And our guests are still in the studio I'm talking about uh, Dr. Judith and uh, Temi Sola. Uh, um, put in perspective to this issue. Now, Dr. Judith, the UNICEF and other development partners have been partnering with Nigerian governments uh, in pushing and promoting children's rights. What have we achieved so far? Tell us the areas that you think we have recorded successes. Well, um, when we look at um, the, according, well, I would like to say according to the latest uh, report by the Universal Basic Education Commission, um, the um, National um, Personnel Audit, rep um, the report of 2019 stated that 10.1 children are out of school. And this was actually, the survey was conducted in 2018. It was actually conducted um, in the period of the insurgency, but then there was no COVID. Um, and it was found out that in that personnel audit, performance in terms of um, WIAC results uh, in the last two years had improved. Uh, we're also able to see that school attendance, so children coming to school, had also improved in the last two years. Um, for us in education, we look at as some key indi indices. We look at, you know, children attendance of school, children enrol enrolling in school, and we also look at their performance. So um, we have data, like I mentioned, the um, UBEC personnel, National Personnel Audit 2019, that shows that there's been improvement. All right, thank you very much. Now, I will follow up that question with another one. As, uh, as you play your role with the UNICEF as an education officer handling education in emergency uh, coordination at uh, national level under UNICEF, what has been your experience in handling children's issues? Okay, um, let me see. Let me talk more, more, more recently. All right. Um, we, you know, when the presidential task force um, announced that um, schools will be utilized, they will be proposed for use as markets and isolation centers. For us, it was a very great challenge because we realized that we have a large number of children out of school, over 10 million, and we felt that when this, uh, some of these schools are utilized for isolation, there will be an increase in stigma and then parents will seek not to enable, not to allow their children attend such schools. So in response to that, the Education Emergencies Working Group, which I coordinate at national levels, was able to develop a guidance document which identified key actions that needed to be taken before the schools were pre-purposed, who were the responsible stakeholders, who were the stakeholders to check and make sure that at the point the school is being handed over, it is well uh, decontaminated, it is in a condition that is able to support education continuity and also to ensure that it is done participatorily with the community. So that guidance was uh, developed, you know, in, in this respect. And more um, especially and more recently, the school reopening guidelines that, were, that are currently being used in all the states. Right. This was, you know, developed in collaboration with Federal Ministry of Education, NCDC, and it highlighted key measures that had to be put in place to make sure that school reopening is safe, is conducted in a safe manner, it is maintained in the school environment in a safe manner such that all the facilities that support, you know, safety in school, so we're talking of water, um, running water, we're talking of, you know, the uh, personal protective um, equipment and all the other um, materials are available. Teachers are trained and they know what to do. You know, they enforce and maintain safe distancing even in the classroom and also they conform to protocols, school protocols that are, you know, um, guided by a school health focal officer. So in the development of this guidance, UNICEF and the Education Emergencies Working Group has contributed and it is this guidance that is being used 
in all the states as we speak. Also, the need for frequent risk assessment. The risk assessment is to see how, you know, what status, what is the status of risk in the school? Are they still maintaining, you know, the status quo in terms of the protocols that I have been identified as very critical? Okay, so to, yeah. it means uh, at every point in time you are assessing it and evaluating uh, yes. the mechanisms, right? Yes. Okay, tell me, Sola. Now, as a parliament, you've got uh, another uh, job cut out for you. Uh, so, as the chairperson of a child rights committee, voice of uh, girls' parliament, how was uh, the support system and motivation uh, been? How has it been from government? Uh, partners in promoting girls' issues, and as a parliament, what are the issues you've been putting forward? What are the ways through which you've been reaching out to government to uh, ensure that uh, your voices are heard? Okay. As you know, we are the voice of the girls' parliament, so our, issue, our problems that we pose to solve are based on the girl child's problems. So the government has been really supportive. I think we met with Honorable Tao Aluga not too long ago, like last month, and we discussed with her at length about our plans for the next year, what we plan to achieve in terms of improvement of the girl child, and she was really supportive. Also, we've been, we've been also been talking with various organizations, and they've been showing a lot of support in funding our programs that okay. we have in mind, such as response centers for girl, child, for girl children to go to when they need help. So. Generally, the government has been really supportive, but I feel like there can be more support coming from that direction. Okay, if you want to see a, a quick um, intervention now, as we speak, which one would you expect very briefly? Um, the most urgent issue that I feel should be, that I would expect to be addressed, will be the problem of safety of the girl child. You know, we hear a lot of cases of rape, and molestation these days and this is a very this is a, a issue that is very close to my heart and i feel like it should be the first issue the government should address it should always be at the back of their minds okay thank you very much uh, Temis Ola. but uh, before i allow dr judith to go i'd like you quickly to uh, comment on this uh, the domestication of uh, child rights um, act in the country how what hope do you see in this and how do you think this can help quickly well it can help a lot because making people more aware of the rights of children who and ensure that these rights are respected you know it's not a guarantee that people will still respect this right now that they know about it but now we we'll expect more response and it should it should improve how the child children feel about themselves because you know when you know that someone out there is looking out for your well-being it, it gives you a sense of okay at least even if i face problems and a sense of people, belonging yes right, are thank you and dr this. judith you want to quickly comment on that briefly yes, i want to say that there should be punitive measures right. for perpetrators that is one there should be a sex offender register in this country so that every state everybody who has been you know um indicted it's publicized. Let the pictures be everywhere. Let right. the registers be there so that even the, the whoever it is, the family, you know, the, the it, it will I mean it will cause more impact because when people realize that if they, you know, um, sexually molest a child, they stand the risk of their reputations being ruined. Then they I think afraid. they will do well not to do it. All yes. right. Thank you very much uh, for your perspective so far. Dr. Judith Giwa Amu, Education Officer, UNICEF, we appreciate your coming. My pleasure. And also, Ted Misola, Chairperson, Child Rights Committee, Voice of the Girls of Parliament, we really appreciate you. Thank you. And we hope you continue to speak out uh, for the voiceless. Okay. And that's Nigeria today. We thank you for watching it. If a program returns tomorrow or, or Monday at 7.30 in the evening. But you can watch these and other editions of a program on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash NCA News 24 Hub. I am Musbao and we have thanks a lot for your time.